Now that you've finished building up the basic form of your mask, we're gonna add a layer of plaster gauze. The first thing you need to do is give your mask the shake test. Give it a good shake and see if anything falls off. What's most likely gonna come loose is anywhere you use tinfoil. It's kind of hard to make tinfoil stick. So you might wanna go and add a couple little pieces of tape just to make sure. After that, you need to take a piece of newsprint and crumble it up and stuff it behind your mask. You're gonna need that to support your mask while you're using the plaster. The plaster gets wet and wet paper, you know, is gonna to start to get saggy. So just a sheet of newspaper or maybe a half a sheet should be enough to support the back of your mask while it gets wet. I think you're gonna to notice today that plaster gauze is some pretty magical stuff. You just dip it in water, lay it on your sculpture, and in a couple of minutes, it's gonna harden uh, really hard. You're also gonna notice on your table that there are a couple of pairs of kind of crusty scissors. These are the scissors that we ruined last year using plaster. And so I'm gonna ask that you don't take any of the nice new scissors and keep using the crusty old scissors if you need to cut any of your pieces smaller. Okay, now I'm ready to start working on my mask. I'm gonna dip a sheet in the water, put it on the mask, smooth it out, get another sheet, put it down, smooth it out, and just keep going until my whole mask is covered. You're gonna notice that plaster sticks to plaster a lot better than it sticks to the paper or especially the tin foil. So as you're working, it's a lot better to do some areas that are close together and always make sure that each new sheet overlaps the last one just by a little bit. You wanna rub the plaster in and try to fill all of the holes and just keep going until you get your whole mask covered. Another cool thing about plaster gauze is that you can mold it a lot like clay. If you realize as you're working that you wanna add a few more smaller details that, that stick out from your mask, you can take some plaster, stick it in the water and just smush it up like a ball of clay and add it right to your mask. I'm gonna add a triangular shape up here on my mask's forehead, and I'm just gonna smush it down. It's probably gonna stick just like that, but just to be safe, I'm gonna grab another piece and use it kind of like a piece of tape and just take a sheet of the plaster gauze, lay it over the top, and smooth it down to make sure that that form is really gonna stay where I put it. Now I just realized that I made a mistake. I am not gonna be able to see out of this mask because I didn't cut any holes for the eyes. Now you do not need holes for your eyes if it's not something that you're planning to wear walking down the street. But if you want to, this is really a good idea to do this before you start adding the plaster. The newspaper is really easy to cut through with your scissors. It'll just, you know, if you, you try, you can stab a hole really, really easily. So before you get going with the plaster, if you want to add holes for your eyes, it's a really good idea to do that before you get started. And then what you're gonna to wanna to do is cut some really small pieces of the plaster gauze and dip them in the water as usual and kind of wrap them through the hole to give it a nice smooth shape. Another challenge you might have while you're working is that if you made any pieces that stick far off the shape of your mask. If you made horns or a beard or anything coming out of your mask, you're gonna realize that when you start covering it with plaster, it's gonna get heavy and it's gonna to start to fall backwards towards the table. If this happens to you, it's actually a really easy fix. You just need to figure out a way to support it until the plaster hardens, which really only takes a few minutes. So you can try doing it with some crumbled up newspaper. You can try doing it with um, a bowl or a wooden block, or you just need to find something that you can place under, like for, for me it's the horn, until that plaster has a chance to, to harden in about five minutes or so. As a final step, you're gonna need to flip your mask over and keep adding plaster to the back of any horns or any beard or any shapes that you have sticking out. And you also wanna add some plaster around the frame. You don't have to worry about covering the entire thing, but you do wanna make sure that your edges are smooth. You probably won't get to this step today and that's all right. Today you just wanna see how far you can get getting a nice covering on the front of your mask and then next time you come in, we'll look for any holes that we need to fill in and we'll smooth out your edges and then you'll be ready to paint. Okay, before you go, I need to give you a quick word about cleanup. 
you are taking plaster and putting it in water and then the plaster is getting rock hard in a matter of about five minutes. Imagine what would happen to our sinks if all of you went over and washed your hands that were covered in plaster down those sinks. It would get pretty hard pretty fast and you would probably get me fired. Now I hope you don't really want to get me fired. So when you go to the sink, you're going to notice that there is a bucket and you are going to have five seconds with the water. One, two, three, four, five. Turn the water off, go grab a paper towel, and the paper towel is going to get most of the rest of the plaster off your hands. When you are done, the plaster does dry your hands a little bit, so I'm going to come around and give you a nice little squirt of lotion to help soften them back up and you should be good to go. Now let's go make a masterpiece.